So welcome everyone to this month's On Track session. Um, we're really excited for um, this session with Egan from Get Found Madison. He's going to be talking a lot about um, Google and SEO and kind of how to get to the top of the list, even if you don't maybe know what you're doing, which is definitely me. Um, I want to thank our sponsors of this program. So thank you to Monona Bank, to TDS, to H. Kruger Associates, and to Total Wine for hosting and helping uh, make these programs for membership possible. As you guys have probably done a million Zooms, um, we would ask that you keep your microphone on mute just to eliminate background noise. We do encourage you to turn your camera on if possible, because then we know you're out there and we're not talking to our computer screens and no one's listening. Um, as we go through it, um, Egan is going to be asking some questions, I think, in chat. And also feel free, if you guys have questions, to type them into chat and we'll be monitoring that. We also have some time built in the end for, for other questions. So with that, I'd like to introduce, formally introduce Egan Heath. He is the founder and owner of the local digital marketing agency, Get Found Madison, which spe specializes in SEO, online ads, and web analytics. He also owns the e-commerce business, Splendid Beast, which creates custom oil paintings on canvas of your pets. He recently launched My Digital Marketing Mastery, which offers step-by-step -step digital marketing video tutorials for marketing teams, business owners, and entrepreneurs. So with that, I would love to turn it over to you. All right, thanks, Chris. Thanks so much for coming, everybody, too. Great having you, and I uh, hope we can provide some value today and talk about how to hop to the top of Google. So. Grow your business, hop on the top of Google, even if you do not have a technical background. So we're gonna talk about Google Ads and SEO. So I'm gonna start with Google Ads and I'm also gonna talk about Bing Ads and we'll talk about why in just a minute. Feel free to jump in with questions whenever too, if I'm not being clear on anything. So um, first, why run pay-per-click ads? Sometimes called PPC, you also see it called SEM, Search Engine Marketing, if we're talking about Google and Bing Ads. So just for some context, if we think about other kinds of marketing, what I would call 20th century marketing, right? We've got billboards, we've got radio, we've got TV, we've got sort of those legacy forms of advertising. And when you think about it, when you advertise in that way, you're, um, you're trying to reach people maybe based on where they're driving on the highway, uh, what program they're listening to on the radio, what, what they're watching on TV, but you're basically interrupting them. They're not there for you. Um, and they're not necessarily in the market for what you sell. Versus when you run a pay-per-click Google ad, so say for example, for a, if you're a law firm and you run a law firm ad, um, you are not interrupting people from what they're trying to do. Uh, yes, Bruce, thank you. I will, I will definitely include the slide deck. I'll send it to Kristen so she can share it out. Thanks for asking that. We're gonna, I, have a, I have a lot of slides and a lot of info, so you will, you will want that for reference. Yeah, good question. So when someone's looking for a law firm and they see ads for a law firm, it's not interrupting them in the same way that a TV ad is interrupting them. And also, it's only, they're only seeing ads that are pertinent to what they're in the market for right now because they told Google what they're looking for. So that's the difference. So why search engine marketing or SEM, also PPC pay-per-click? We want to capture existing demand. People are looking for our products or services, right? And we want to get in front of them right when they're doing that. One big difference, which has really been the, the tide shift in marketing, is it's only pay-per-click. So with those older forms of marketing, it's pretty normal for you to pay by CPM, which is cost per thousand views or impressions. So that's how you pay just this many people drive by on the highway and saw your billboard. That's how you pay. You have no idea if they ever go to your website or ever contact you. So speaking of which, after people click on your Google ad, you can track the results and see, did we get a lead? Did we get a sale out of it? SEO we will talk about today. I would say SEO is harder. It's more work, it takes longer. So if you want faster results for uh, less effort, uh, Google Ads are a great place to start. And then the big reason to do this, and if you can get it working for your business or your organization, the reason to keep doing it is that the leads and sales you generate are worth more than you spend, than your, than your cost per acquisition, right? So that's the idea. So let's talk through kind of the funnel. What are our impressions? We wanna figure out what's our cost per conversion, what's our cost per lead? Well, this many people see our ad, it showed up. They searched for, let's say, law firm Madison, and they saw an ad for our law firm, right? And then we got some fraction of those clicked on our site. Now notice, let me go back to this for just a minute. If people skip your ads, 
it doesn't cost you anything. So you just advertise to people who are in the market for what you do. And it was totally free for you because you didn't pay, hence pay-per-click. So you pay during the click now in this world, and then you want to track on your own what conversions did we get. And a conversion could be something different depending on the campaign we're running, depending on our business, right? But what we really want are the leads and the sales. And those could be conversions. So what are some examples of conversions? For most local businesses, here's what I see. If they're selling things on their website, could be a purchase, e-commerce, right? Um, if we just want people to fill out a contact form, they fill out the contact form. In some cases we track if they click to call us or click to email us. Uh, in rare cases, we'll set up tracking for they click to navigate on Google Maps or something like that. So those are our conversions. So now what we do is whatever our, how, however many clicks we bought, we multiply it by our cost per click and that equals our ad spend. So no longer are we just paying a certain chunk it costs this amount to advertise. It's really up to us how much we want to advertise and we just calculate it by how many clicks, what's the average cost per click, right? And then our cost per conversion becomes what's that ad spend, whoops, divided by the number of conversions. How much do we spend on Google ads? How many conversions did we get? It's that simple, right? So let's do a little example. Let's say we run some Google ads, we get a thousand impressions on them, right? We get 50 clicks at $1 per click and we get one lead out of it, one conversion. How much did that lead cost us? Not a trick question. I'll pause. I'll wait. Say it in the chat if you know. So we had a thousand impressions on our ad. We had 50 clicks at $1 per click and we got one conversion out of that. How much did that conversion cost us? 50 bucks. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, $50 a conversion. Now, if you're selling something that costs hundreds or thousands of dollars and you got decent margins on that, that was a profitable way to buy a new customer. So that's the idea. And you want to do that over and over again and get that working. I want to talk quickly about Bing. So um, a, a lot of people that, like that I know sort of in the marketing space or tech space might, might snicker at Bing and they're like, who's using Bing, right? So as of July, 2020, Bing was almost 26% of searches in the US. So lots of people are using Bing apparently. And part of the reason I think is it's the default on Windows and Alexa and a number of devices. That one underneath where it says Verizon Media, they acquired Yahoo. So Yahoo's another 11%. So Bing is basically one in four searches on the US, particularly heavy on desktop. So if you do B2B or you market to older people, like this, is, this can be a great way to go. Um, yeah, it's the default on Windows and Alexa. When you run Bing ads, they run on Yahoo as well. And the good news is, once you set up your Google ads, you can import them into Bing. So then you're, then you're covering the majority of online searches people are doing, whether it's Google, Bing, or Yahoo. Yahoo. So Google's still the main player, but um, we've seen some clients see some great results here. So I just wanted to mention it. Yeah. So what do we do? Once we have our ad account set up, you just go to ads.google.com and you research the keywords. So you, you figure out how are people searching for what you do? You need to map those opportunities out. Where should our ads appear? And we wanna figure out what pages should they go to? So we go to ads.google.com, we set up the account, we put in our credit card, and then when we're up and running, um, we can go into the keyword planner. One, one other thought on when you set up your account, it, will, it may prompt you to do Google Ads Express, which is like the simple dummy version. I urge you to, to not do that and do the full Google ads so you get all the levers. That's just my personal take. Unless you want a really dummy basic version. I, I like to get all the levers because I, I want to be able to pull them. So we go into the tools keyword planner and then we can put in, so in, in this example, I'm looking at, I'm teaching an SEO course. I have an SEO video course, right? And I might put in phrases like learn SEO, SEO classes, SEO training. I'm checking in the United States in English on the Google network, right? And I can see 1,900 searches per month on average for Learn SEO, 590 for SEO classes, 1,300 for SEO training. This is what we're talking about. We're saying we're, cat, we're tapping into existing demand. Pretty exciting. So then we want to map out. Here's our keyword. Here's what our ad's going to say. And then here's the landing page we're going to take them to. 
And the reason I say this is that we're not just gonna set up Google Ads and let them run to our homepage, especially if we have multiple products or services. We want the flow to be natural for half the searches are gonna be on mobile and someone's searching that phrase, like we wanna take them, if they're looking for a family lawyer, well, we're gonna take them to our family law page, right? If they're looking for a business lawyer, we're taking them to the business law page. We want it to, be, we want it to match up so that wherever they land, they're not disoriented and they don't have to hunt around for what they're looking for. And that's gonna get us better results. So we have a keyword, it's gonna match with our ad, which is gonna match with our landing page. So when I do it for uh, Splendid Beast, my e-commerce site, here's what we did. We did the keyword research, and did you know that in the United States of America, there are 4,400 searches per month for dog painting. So there's demand to tap into. And then pet portraits, right? Dog art, cat painting. So when someone searches for dog painting, we're gonna take them to the dog paintings page. If they search for cat paintings, we're gonna take them to the cat painting page. When I bought the business, there was no dog painting page or cat painting page, and I saw that we needed some because I want people to see exactly what it is they're looking for. So that's, that's the amazing thing. It's almost like pre-Google, you know, it's like, if, what if you knew the number of how many people opened the yellow pages and looked for your type of business? That's, that's the kind of data we have here, and it's amazing. Um, one pro tip I will throw out is, our clients have seen phenomenal results when we take them to a special landing page that's not even on the main website. So at the top, there's no menu. There's nothing for them to do, but watch the video of the owner talking about apply for our financing and, and use cars, right? And then fill out a form. That's all I want them to do. I don't, want to, I don't want them going all over the site, looking at the inventory. Like with the way these guys operate, they just need to pre-apply for credit. And if they qualify, then we talk about what car are you going to buy. And so when we were sending pay-per-click traffic to their website, they were seeing a three and a half percent conversion rate, which means when you think you've, that means, you know, you need 33 people to the site to get a lead. When we switch to this format where it's special campaign landing pages, basically with no top menus, nothing else to do on the site, either you leave or you fill out the form, we were seeing north of 20% conversion rates in some case. That means we only need five people to the site. And if we're paying per click, then we're saving money, that's reducing our cost per conversion. Um, a tool we use to build this is called Lead Pages. I think it's actually leadpages.net. Um, so that is one option. This can be done in WordPress, this can be done with ClickFunnels, there's different ways to do this, but uh, check it out. However, however you're building your pages, look in to see if you can do campaign pages with no menu at the top. All right, now notice we researched our keywords, now we're gonna set up conversion tracking to measure our results. We're not jumping in and writing ads yet because it's not time. We wanna measure our results. So when someone fills out a form on my site, for example, I wanna count it. I wanna send that data back to Google Ads or back to Bing Ads so that I get a, a number in the column that says how many conversions did I get? So this, is, this part is a bit technical. I'll stay out of the weeds for today. This is a good one to, to hire a web developer or a nerd to do, basically, because it's not something you need to do a lot, it's kind of the one-time setup. So Google will give me this code and I need to fire this code, say, when I hit the thank you page after my form. So just add that code to the site. And the reason we do this is for this number right here. So remember the funnel, impressions, clicks, conversions, right? So Google, if you just start running Google Ads now without doing what I just said, you can get a number of impressions, you can get a number of clicks, but you cannot get this number, which is number of leads. So we were working for a salon in Fitchburg right? And we were running their ads. And so we had impressions, clicks, cost, etc. But then how many appointments did they get? And I asked the owner, how much is an appointment worth to you? She said, well, if a woman becomes a full-time client, like a regular client of ours, they, they spend on average $1,400 a year with us. And which as a dude, like I had no idea women were spending that much on their hair. Like amazing, right? So they're getting appointments for 20 bucks an appointment for hair. And if just a handful of those become, you know, long-term clients, then we're really rocking and rolling. And that was a profitable way to acquire a new customer. All right, now we are ready to create the ads. Notice we had a few steps before we, we jumped in and did that. So here's all we want. This is one of my ads I actually run for my SEO course, right? This is all we wanna do. We just wanna write a simple text ad, no problem, right? Well. When you get into the Google Ads interface, and because I told you not to do Google Ads Express, but to get the, all the bells and whistles, it is an overwhelming cockpit. And I regularly hear this from clients and prospects. We're like, we don't know what is going on in here. So 
I'll, I'll talk high level of here's what matters, here's how we think about it. We have campaigns, and that's where we set our daily spend limit. So we're gonna, we're gonna pay per click, but I can say, I wanna spend 10, 20, $100 a day, and you can turn it off or on whenever you want, okay? So that's the campaign. Inside the campaign, we have ad groups, and I'm gonna suggest you use the ad groups for each of your types of services or products. If, if the campaign is sharing a budget, that's fine. And then, you know, if we do landscaping and we do snow removal and we do, you know, gardening, like whatever it is, each one of those gets its own ad group because it's going to match up to its own landing page. And then inside each ad group, I always have at least two ads running because I want to test which one does better, right? I want to improve over time. So that's what matters when you're in the cockpit. It's, it, it really, there is a learning curve to it and there's no doubt about it, but that's what matters. And again, we're matching up the keywords we found. We're going to write an ad for those keywords so that, I'm going to go back to the example, if someone Googles for a SEO training course, I want them to see my ad that says that. And they're like, this is what I look for. Boom, this is what I see. Because we're not interrupting people. We're showing them exactly what they want to see and Google will smile upon us as such. They see that ad, then they go to a landing page. It's all about that. All right. This seems more complicated than it is. Look on these two columns on the right. So if I just put in bike shop and I run an ad, Google will show my ad for cycle store, even though the word bike and the word shop are not in there because Google is figuring out what the synonyms are, right? Now, if I want to be more specific, I put a little plus sign in front of each word and then it's got the word bike, it's got the word shop and it's got the word repair in the middle. That's called modified broad match, okay? If I don't want any words in between, I do bike shop in quotes. So local bike shop is fine, but it won't be bike repair shop anymore. So we're, we're getting more and more specific. Google, when do I want you to show the ads? And then if you put it in brackets like this one at the end, then it's exact match. Either they type in bike shop in our ad shows or they type in something else that's even slightly different like cycle store or even local bike shop and our ad will not show. So you have control over when do your ad thing at a time and you a b test your ads to see which one does better this is very powerful test your landing pages try having a video on the landing page like i showed with the easton motors example right try having different headlines potentially try different designs different calls to action right and then this is more advanced stuff but what's our conversion rates right um well, auction insight shows us are the competitors showing up above us more often impression share means what percent of the time am i eligible to show my ad that it's showing up if I'm showing up 10% of the time, that means I could 10X my daily budget and show up a lot more, right? And then how long are they spending on our site in Google Analytics? Those are the things to check. And then we bid higher and lower as appropriate. So you can set your cost per click bids if you want. There's also automated bidding. All right, I'm gonna just pause for a sec here because I'm about to go into SEO and that's gonna be a bear. Oh, Steve. How many variants on keyword match types did you start with? I'm not sure, Steve, feel free to, um, so in that example with my SEO course, I, yep. yeah, I may have started it quite broad. I may have had just learn SEO broad match and Google was showing me for all kinds of crap and I was wasting my money. So I got it down to phrase match where it's a little more specific at least. And I probably need to keep adding negative keywords because even with learn SEO, there could be all kinds of junk in there. Yeah. Bruce, can I limit by geography? I want 11 counties in Wisconsin. Definitely doable, Bruce. We do it all the time. In the case of that um, uh, car dealership, we do it at, you know, a radius around each dealership, basically. Good question. Yeah. Any other questions on Google or Bing ads? At the very end, I'll, I'll reference a few clients that saw some great results from it. Yeah, Steve, thanks for asking. All right. I'm gonna go into SEO. Feel free to pull me back into Google Ads or ask questions about SEO because it gets a little more complicated here. All right, ready? Search engine optimization, SEO. This is, this is my specialty, guys. This is my bread and butter, so I love talking about this. Why would we work on our SEO? If you're here, you probably already know the answer. Feel free to put it in the chat if you have a reason you're interested in it. The big reason, like we've kind of talked about with the billboards versus Google, 
is search shows intent. People are telling search engines exactly what they want, right? So that's, the, that's basically reason number one. There's, it, that's why it's different than social media, different than email, different than a billboard, different than a TV ad. How many Google searches do you think there are per day? Take a guess in the chat. Steve Billions, that is the right unit. Unit's right. How about price is right? How many billion do you think, Steve? Hundreds of, okay. So we got what? Seven billion people on earth, roughly half are on the internet. Most probably are using Google, right? So we're around three and a half, sometimes cracking four billion Google searches a day. So that's a lot. So each, per, each person's definitely using quite a few, right? So that's great. All right. What percent of those searches are for local information? I know some of you are local businesses. It's about half. About half of searches on Google are for local info. And then in normal times, what percent visit the store the same day? Right? So we're at three and a half billion searches a day. 1.75 billion are for local information. What percent of those 1.75 billion actually set foot in a physical store? About one in three on desktop. What if they search for mobile? It's about half and half. It's slightly more on mobile. So if someone searches for inf local information on mobile, half of them set foot in store same day from a smartphone. They, they've got money and they ask their smartphone, where do they take that money? And Google shows them. And then what percent make a purchase? Almost one in five. This is a bit older too. This is from 2014. So I would imagine these numbers are higher now. All right. Where do searches click? This is why we're all here. If I Google for pizza in Madison, Wisconsin, right? People click at the top. No big surprise. This is, these are the click through rates. I'm moving my Zoom stuff so I can see it too. Um, that top spot historically has gotten about 30% of clicks. Spot number two, around 15. Number three, around 10. And down from there. By the time you're on page two, there are 10 more Google results and they share 4% of the clicks. So where's the best place to bury a dead body? Second page of Google. That's, that's not where you want to be for your business, right? All right. This is changing. And so I think there's always a place for pay-per-click strategy and organic SEO strategy too. So this, over the course of years, I've seen this number coming down and down and down. So SEO is getting harder and the returns to SEO are decreasing, just gonna be honest with you, as a guy who does this for a living, all right? But you're still tapping into, I wanna show up for pizza if I'm selling pizza, right? So, same idea. What, how do people Google for what I do? Well, everybody Googles a little differently. I want you to pretend the pandemic is all over and you're going on a vacation, all right? Let's say we're going on a vacation to Florida. It's 2023. <laughs> And you're picking up your phone and you're Googling or your desktop, right? You're going on your computer and you're Googling. I want you to type in the chat what you're Googling for that first awesome vacation that's going to be in Florida after pandemic. Pretend like the chat is your, is your Google search for this one. I want to see how you Google for this. All right, I see some coming in. Elizabeth, things to do, Panama City Beach. Very nice. Steve, awesome Florida vacations for single guys. Very nice. Family attractions, Florida, Middleton Chamber. Thank you, Kristen. Top rated hotel, Florida. All right, Kim wants the finest. Vacation resort, Florida. So does Faith. Top 10 hotels, Jim. Nice. Okay, you can get the idea. Everybody Googles a little differently. So however you think people look for your business is different than how they actually do it. So we need to like have a reality check on how we talk about what we do. And I'll be honest guys, this is year number five in business for me. And it never fails to amaze me that the folks I meet around town in the chamber and elsewhere, the way they talk about what they do, I don't always understand it. And that's probably the same is true for me. I'm in a technical field here, right? So I need to, sometimes I need to simplify and not say search engine marketing, pay-per-click. It's just like internet marketing. How do I get business online? Like we not, we may not even be to the point of search engine optimization with somebody. We might just need to talk about digital marketing, internet marketing, get more business online, you know? So we need to go up a level. So here we go. 
we're going to brainstorm keywords and we're going to type into Google what we think people would search and it's going to pull up all kinds of suggestions, right? And Google's algorithm is basing that on a lot of data, 3.5 billion searches a day. And by the way, if you put an asterisk in the middle of a search, it will fill in other ideas in the middle of that search. So that can give you some ideas too, right? So we're getting it right from the horse's mouth in a sense. If we scroll down to the bottom, it'll, they'll say, here's some searches related to what you're talking about. So maybe think about some of those. And then we're seeing more and more Google result page features that are people also ask about this. These may or may not be pertinent. Now notice, sometimes people say, Google, where do I take my money? I wanna buy shoes in Middleton, right? And sometimes people are looking for information, right? Of like, how do I set up my Raspberry Pi computer? Like, so there's commercial queries and informational queries, and we can come back to that later. And then if we just have a bunch of keywords that we wanna concatenate, meaning put together in permutations on the end, we can go to mergewords.com, I think it is. And so say we do landscaping, gardening, snow removal, lawn care, we do it in Madison, Middleton, Dan County, I meant to say Dan County, and you just hit merge, and it'll give you all the permutations of all these. Landscaping Madison, landscaping near me, landscaping Middleton, landscaping Wisconsin, landscaping Dane County. It'll give you all those, and then you can plug them into the Google Ads Keyword Planner. And the Keyword Planner has some tools like this as well. So even though we're doing organic marketing, we're not necessarily paying per click, we still have a Google Ads account we're using to get some data. And we're plugging in our product or service or we're right about there. Or we're plugging in our landing page right about there. Or pro tip, we're plugging in a competitor's landing page here to get ideas. What does Google think the competitor would run ads for? So even though we're not running ads, we're still learning how many people per month search for what I do. And to, I think it was, I don't know if it was Jim's question earlier. Bruce, Bruce asked about geography. Um, you can set the geography by Dane County or whatever you want to do. So you can find out what's the, what, what's the demand for life insurance in Dane County per month. You can do that. All right. Another great free tool to check out is called Uber Suggest. Uber like you're catching a ride, but unrelated. And you type in something like search engine optimization and it gives you lots of ideas, which are basically pulling from the same places I showed you. Google Auto Suggest, Google also recommends, right? So you can get a lot of data and notice this free tool, Uber Suggest, will also show you estimated search volumes here, at least for the US. I think if you want Dane County, you gotta use uh, Google Ads Keyword Planner. So once we've got a nice big list, let's say we've got a spreadsheet, maybe a couple hundred options of ways people might search Google for what we do. It's time to get the data. Now, if we're using the Google Ads Keyword Planner to get some, to tap into existing demand and find out how many people search for what we do, if we're not running any ads, they give us these worthless ranges. Landscaping near me, right? 10,000 to 100,000 a month. Well, that's nothing. That doesn't tell me anything. So it's only when you're running Google Ads, I don't know what the threshold is, a couple hundred bucks a month, that they'll actually give you the real data. So that's kind of a bummer. So use Uber Suggest if you're looking for free, you know, the free option, or if you're running some ads, you can at least get this data here. That's the deal. Or hire an SEO agency who can get this data for you. And then Google Trends is a great one too. This is over time. So this one, these numbers, snow care removal, or Wisconsin landscape, landscape in Madison, Wisconsin, 590 searches per month, right? It's a local search. Obviously there's seasonal variability to it too, so averages don't mean everything, right? in the summer is more when people want landscaping. Um, oh yeah, that is looking at average per month over the last 12 months. And obviously sometimes it's bumpy, right? If it's seasonal. This can give you broader trends over the course of years. So the phrase content marketing refers to blogging and videos and podcasting, you know, to put free information out there to market your business. And you can see that phrase has been on the up and up and up in terms of Google searches over the past five years from when I did this. So get, get a sense of which way is the arrow going on. Is this a phrase that people are using or is it kind of going out of style? All right, we've got our keywords. We've got our monthly search volume. Now it's time to select the targets. When we do this in my agency, here's how we think about each word. We go down that list of 200 plus ideas on a spreadsheet and we ask this about each one. What's the search volume? I just showed you how to get that, right? What is the search intent? That gets to that piece of... Um, is it like 
is it how to how to program a computer game 2020 or is it i want to buy a new doom game right those are totally different if the word buy is in there it's a commercial intent if it's a how to something that's informational intent so i probably want to start by focusing on commercial intent for my service pages or my product pages and then if there's some good informational ones then i'll think about for my blog post content marketing right but for starters, I want, to, I want to go with the money words. That's the commercial intent words. And then the difficulty to rank, this is outside the scope of what I can talk about today, but there are paid SEO tools that can help you estimate how hard is it going to be to get there to page one if you're not on page one, and then get to the top three if you're not in the top three. Once we have this data, we're going to group related words together. So dog paintings, dog portraits, to me, that's the same, right? Back, remember, it's backwards facing data. And what's fascinating for all of these three and a half billion Google searches every single day, still after all these years, we're at 20 plus years of Google, right? 15% of them Google has never seen before. So for all the guessing we can do, especially as people are doing more and more with voice search, with Google Home and with Alexa and things like that, the queries are getting longer and stranger and it's more like natural voice rather than typing in two or three words into Google. So there's always new ones that are going to be surprising Google that are not even going to show up in our keyword research. Kind of interesting, right? All right. We're going to take stock of our SEO and then we're going to plan. I always recommend this over and over again with your marketing. You measure, you improve, you measure, and you just keep on doing that until you're rich. Okay. Don't stop. So you can always test see where you're at in the rankings. If you just Google regularly and you're signed into Gmail, Google already knows they want, you want your own website. So what you need to do is do file incognito or private browser or whatever to try to clear out some of the cookies to see what do other people see when they search for spice rack or whatever phrase you're testing. So if you're manually testing, I recommend this. It's still not perfect because Google knows your IP address and they may be customizing your results and you're not seeing what other people are seeing. So how do you see what other people see? Uh, I'll get to that in one second. You can also measure how much traffic you're getting from organic search in Google Analytics. Google Analytics, you can run for free on your site and it tells you how do people get to your site, how many pages they go into, what pages they see in, right? And then over time, you wanna see something like this where your, or, your traffic's going up, but specifically orange is organic traffic. That's going up over time. We're getting more and more visitors to the website, okay? Google Search Console can show you what are people searching to get to you. So Google Analytics shows you what are they doing on the site. Google Search Console shows you how do they find my site in Google. Yeah. So this one's a little more technical. A lot of people don't have this one set up, but it shows you. I'll show you what it shows you. If you just Google for this phrase, Google Search Console, you'll find it. Here's what it gives you. It gives you the number of clicks you got, the number of impressions, Right? Even though we're not talking about ads, you're still getting impressions on the result page of did we show up on the result page. The click-through rate, it's one divided by the other, clicks divided by impressions, right? And then average position, you're showing up on Google. So if you're, if you're having doubts that what we're seeing here in Madison may not reflect when people search in California or in Monaco or whatever, right? This is a good way to go in there and see on average where are people seeing us at. Here's what this looks like. So for a law firm, they're getting clicks from CCAP criminal background check. This was an old blog post I did, right? And you can see their, their position number eight out of 10 on Google's result page, right? So they're, all, they're not even getting 1% of, of the of, of click-through rate, right? 16 clicks out of 3,500 impressions. So if they moved up a couple spots, basically every spot you climb on page one, you can double the number of clicks you're getting. So if they go back to this blog post and optimize it a little more, they could get a lot more clicks on that. So we're learning based on how are we showing up already? How can we do better? Extremely valuable. When I took over Splendid Beast Pet Paintings, I went right into Google Search Console and let me tell you what I found. Pet portraits got searched 3,600 per month and they were on 11.8. How many results are there on page one? Oh, there's 10. So what page were they on when I bought the business? They were on page two, they were, they buried the dead body. That's no good. So I knew I needed to go right to work to start ranking for some of these phrases to get us to just single digits on the positions and then I ideally spots one through three. Yeah, these are some of the paintings. These are handmade oil paintings on canvas. Just thought you should know. We have painters in Southeast Asia that do the actual painting and people send in pictures of their dog or their cats or whatever. So it's goofy, it's niche, right? That is Splendid Beast, and that's the idea. So I, I bought the business after looking at Google Search Console because I saw opportunity. All right, 
How do we optimize our website? We need to make it clear to search engines what our pages are about. This goes back to how do we talk about what we do? Let me, let me go back to that one on uh, that same law firm. I was like, what do you guys do? And they said litigation. And I looked up the this, this search volume and uh, zero, zero per month for litigation in Madison. No one knows what that is except for lawyers and people who watch like what law dramas or something, right? So <laughs> I was like, does that, what does that mean? She goes, that's like when you want to sue somebody. And I was like, let's look up, I need to sue somebody. And it's like, that had some volume and everything related to lawyers for lawsuits, et cetera, et cetera. Like you need to think differently on your keyword research, lesson learned, right? All right, optimize your website to make it clear. Many websites, you will, let's say you hired a web designer, they're a graphic designer, they're a web designer, they make your site look beautiful. It's like this on the inside. And yet the doors to your house look like this. I regularly see this. What do I mean? What do I mean your doors look like crap? This is what I mean. This is, a business, this is actually a business that builds websites. And I was like, yikes. Business.com blurted out to protect the incompetent. A description of this result is not available. This is what showed up on Google when you looked for their business. That's pretty bad. Let's look at a better example. Plumbers. Now, Capital Plumbing Company, like they they don't necessarily have Capital Plumbing right in there. Like there's things you can improve about this, but they knew Plumbers in Madison, Wisconsin is what they're going for. So they put that right on the title tag of their homepage. Smart. Same with Four Lakes Plumbing, just plumber right in there. They've got Madison in there. They've got their brand name, but the brand name doesn't even come first. And so the same with Get Found Madison. Our homepage title is like SEO Madison, Wisconsin, or something like that, SEO company. Rank higher with search engine optimization, where if someone wants to see my brand name, they can see it ideally in my domain name because I made that match, right? Or somewhere else in the description. Notice also if someone Googles for plumbing, in the description, it'll be bold. Google says, ah, here's the word you're looking for. So it jumps out to you. So <laughs> this is a big topic. I strongly recommend WordPress for SEO. And in WordPress, you can use a free plugin called Yoast. You can download the free version of this plugin. And when you do, you say, I did my keyword research, Yoast. I want to rank for Madison SEO or Madison SEO company or whatever yours is, right? And it gives me bullet points and it gives me real-time feedback. Yo, you need more words on this page. You need to have it in the title. Like you need to include it in the first paragraph. It'll just tell you what to do and how to optimize for what Google's looking for. Pretty nice. If you don't have WordPress, we're gonna talk about what you need to do manually. But if you don't have WordPress, I want you to think about getting on WordPress. Uh, and I've got a developer on my team too, if you ever wanna talk. All right. So here's the title and description. This is what I was talking about. SEO Madison, Wisconsin, rank higher with search engine optimization. So that's what I'm going for. That's what I wanna show up for, no doubt. Even though we're getting on Madison, people can figure that out. What I wanna show up for is what they're looking for. Okay, so quick recap, these free tools you can do a lot with. Uber Suggest will give you how many people per month in the US search for what you're talking about. And if you wanna get local to that, you could add on the end with merge words, you could say Middleton or Madison or whatever, Landscaping Madison, right? Search Console will show you your historical search data. And the Yoast SEO plugin will tell you how to fix it, how to get higher on your pages, right? So that's pretty darn good. All right, let's keep going. A few words on site structure. What pages should you have on your website? For most local businesses, the homepage is the most important. And that's why for getcomassin.com, I really took a hard look at the title for the homepage, right? The title and the description and everything. Each product or service page also gets its own page. So if you look at our site, we have one for Facebook ads. We have one for Google ads. We have one for digital marketing speaker. We have one for, you know, uh, senior living marketing services like if, if there's specific things we do, I've got a page all about it because I want to take people right to that page if that's what they Googled for. And then in terms of how many links away, how deep do you have to click? If it's an important page, should be available from the menu or the footer from the homepage because your, your Facebook and your Google My Business and every time you get mentioned in the press, they're probably going to link to your homepage and you need to like spread that link love throughout the rest of your site. We'll talk more about that in a second. But don't be going like five clicks deep to get to your most important page. Make it, ideally you can click once from the homepage and get there. And then each URL should have a distinct phrase or set of related phrases it targets. We saw that, splendidbeast.com slash dog paintings. That page targets 
Dog portraits, dog paintings, dog art. You get the idea. I did not make separate pages for dog portraits. I was like, it's the same thing. Clean URLs. We use real words with keywords and hyphens. We do not use stop words. Those are little words like the, uh, as, or and. We keep it nice and short and sweet so the search engine knows what this URL is because Google is crawling millions, probably billions, of URLs every single day. And we're not going to include dates in our blog posts because we want our blog posts to keep getting traffic for years and years, ideally. So here's an example. When I Google about keyword research, like we just talked about a couple sections ago, it's getfarmmedicine.com slash keyword research, nice and clean. And by the way, WordPress makes it very easy to specify my URLs and some website platforms do not. Images, before I even upload them, one, I'm gonna compress them using a tool like WP Smush or compressor.io so that they're not massive crazy files that are gonna be slow to load. I'm gonna rename them and talk about what the heck is in the picture. I'm gonna use keywords and hyphens just like we do with URLs, so best pizza man of Wisconsin, Salvatore's, right? Like I'm gonna like, put it in there and that's gonna be the name of the file, okay? And I'm gonna resize and I want them under one megabyte per image unless there's like a reason it's gotta be massive, okay? Yeah. And then I'm gonna use what's called alt text and this will be in the, the website system. Squarespace and Wix have this too, but I, I obviously recommend WordPress and you say, what is, what is this a painting of? It's a painting, dog sits next to its painting as Lord Nelson in Splendid Beach, right? I mean, they're describing this, by the way, when people use alternative browsers, like their heart of sight, um, their browser tells them, what is this a picture of? So you're helping people potentially with disabilities understand your website, which you should be doing, right? And you're telling the search engine, this is what it's a picture of. So that's an alt attribute. So here's an example. And this is not a good example, but me, this is my old picture on the website. The file name I changed to Egan Heath, get found Madison, outside color square, JPEG. It's not even that good. You, I should have said SEO expert Egan Heath, right? That's a better way. Title, Egan Heath, Get Found Madison. Again, SEO consultant or something. Alt text, Get Found Madison founder, Egan Heath. So now when you Google for my name, like you'll probably see this on Google because I told Google that's what this is a picture of. That's me, right? Header, let's talk about text. So you don't have to read this text. This is like a big long blog post, right? We use keywords in our headers and we use headers to break up text, particularly anytime we have a lot of a lot of words, hundreds of words, right? We answer and ask questions just like people do with a search engine. So Google can take them right to that question. We make H1, so there's multiple headers, H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6. H1 is this top one up here. So chapter three, site architecture of search engine factors. That's the name of the page or the article. That's the H1. And then all these little ones are H2, H3, et cetera, right? You can, these can all be H2. So all the other ones make them H2, for example. Break up the subsections with H2 and H3. Yep. So we're breaking it up so search engines understand what's going on. And then we're going to include in the text itself, we're going to use our keywords, synonyms for the keywords, and we're going to make certain that within the first sentence, we're talking about our target keywords and related phrases. Okay? We're not going to stuff them. We're not going to say SEO company Madison, Wisconsin over and over and over again all over our page. We're going to, like, we're writing for humans and we're writing for search engines. Okay? And there's some evidence that more words is better. This is a hot topic among SEO professionals. Here's the, here's the results. Here's, the, here's where the evidence comes from. The guy did a study of a million search results. It's pretty interesting. The Backlinko search engine ranking study. What was the correlational factor? Number of words on the page. Spots one and two had more than 1,950 words, almost 2,000 words per page. So if you're a local business, do you need a small essay on each service page? Probably not but get to at least three or 500 words. Use more words than you think you should. And if, you don't, if it's messing with your design, put it lower on the page. And then lastly, we wanna link between our pages and educate Google what they're about. So in this example, this Neil Patel blog, when I click SEO and PPC, that means the page I'm gonna land on over here, Google understands that page over here is about SEO and PPC. This one, best CRM, the page over here that I click that page is about CRM. So Google gets information about pages on the web based on what's called the anchor text of the hyperlinks. So, so link between your pages contextually with text like this. Don't just rely on menus. If you're a local business, we need to talk about your business listings. So Google My Business is the most important one. You send for a postcard, they send you a code, then you get to own your Google My Business listing. 
Remember those keyword optimized images we made for the website? We're going to upload them there too. So Google understands, ah, SEO expert Egan Heath, right? And then we're going to make crazy certain that name, address, phone number, et cetera, is the same everywhere. Same on Facebook, same on Google My Business, same on Yelp, same on House, same on the Middleton Chamber of Commerce directory, everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. We're not using LLC in some places and not in others. We're not abbreviating suite in some places, not in others. It's canonical. It is your thumbprint across the web. So make it exact. And once you do that and you're up and running and you've verified your, your page, ask people to leave you reviews and then respond to your reviews. And ideally you're dropping your keywords in the reviews and in the responses. So if, people are, if you're selling pizza, people are talking about how great the pizza is, right? If you're selling SEO services, hopefully people are talking about your SEO services and you're saying, hey, gl glad you had such a great result with our SEO service on Google Ads. Make sure you change your address in Google My Business when you move, not after. Don't wait until after, right, Steve? Yeah, good call. And then there is a post feature where you can say, here's an update. Um, it's meh. That part's meh, but it's something that people could potentially see you've got an event coming up, right? Um, either, and then once you've done Google, Facebook, Yelp, all the big ones, you can submit to Moz Local for a hundred bucks a year and they will push out your information to some other directories too. And then Google and Bing will find that same name, address, phone number throughout the web. Yeah, so check any that are missing. If you ever have duplicates, you delete that crap and you make sure everything is exactly right. Name, address, phone number, our thumbnail, our thumbprint across the web. If you Google for Moz, local SEO by city or by category, or if you just check out the slides later, it'll tell you what are the most important ones. So there's, it's by city. Here's the important ones, Yellow Pages, Yelp. This is a couple of years ago, Super Pages, Yahoo for Madison, right? Facebook's probably more important than most of these. And then by category, depending on your industry. So there are some ideas if you're wondering, where the heck do I list my business? That's not my website. Top directories for Madison. All right, link building. We need to earn links from other websites. I got some bad news, everybody. Everything we just talked about, that's like 30% of the game. We're not even halfway there. Here's how Google works. Every one of these is a web page, okay? And the little purple ones are like Joe Schmo's blog that he just started and nobody links to him. And this is a big New York Times article, right? This one is like the Isthmus. Here's Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, okay? And then orange is like a scientific paper that the New York Times links to. Does that make sense? This is how valuable it is in Google eyes. This is like the page rank. So when you get links from reputable sites that have lots of links pointing to them, it pumps up your bubble. That's how I say it. It makes your page rank higher and it makes, uh, yeah, it makes your website rank higher on Google. Another study of 2 million SEO results. Everything we talked about before, put your keyword in the title and the header in the content. This is the correlational factor with, with ranking on Google. And then everything I just said, how many websites link to you? How many pages link to you? How many links do you have? Those matter many, many, many times more than everything you just did in Yoast. You gotta earn links from other websites. That's why SEO never ends. It's an ongoing thing that you keep working on. How the heck do we get other people to link to us? We have business listings on things like the Middleton Chamber of Commerce, right? We set up every social media profile. We're not even gonna be on Pinterest, but we're gonna set up a Pinterest profile because we want that sweet, sweet link to our site. Same with LinkedIn, same with Tumblr, same with Instagram, right? You don't have to be active on every single social media you know, platform if it's not right for your business, but set up the basic profile and link back to your site. You can guest post on other blogs, right? You can reach out to people and write articles for them. You can reach out to partners, business associations, vendors, get creative. You can leave testimonials for people on their sites and they link back to you. And then my personal favorite, this is how I've done a lot, is we do earn media and PR. We respond to reporters on Haro, help a reporter out. So if you search for Haro or help a reporter out, you'll find the website. You can sign up for free for this digest. And then every day you get more requests from reporters than you ever wanted to have in your inbox. And you can go through them and find the ones that are pertinent to you. So I set up alerts. It'll come to my main box if the words SEO, Facebook ads, or anything related to our clients comes up. And then I respond and I write SEO and advertising trend predictions. Hi, Trisha. Here's some predictions. Bullet, bullet, bullet. I'm eminently quotable and I want them to just pull it and I'll like, I have little links to my headshot and crap like that down here so that they have everything they need to just quote me and link to my site. 
And that is how we got GitHub Madison ranking pretty well for SDO company. All right, logging and content creation. I know we're coming up at time, I'll be quick. This is bad news for some of you. I really think you should be blogging. Even if you're a local business, you should have a blog. Here's why. It demonstrates your expertise and it builds authority. It shows search engines like Google and Bing that you're updating your site. You didn't just set it and forget it. You're also doing content marketing, just like I'm doing now. You're giving before you receive, and that triggers people's reciprocity. You're creating opportunities to rank for other phrases, particularly those informational phrases that people might start with before they go to the commercial phrases where they buy. And a big reason, linkable assets. Let me show you what I mean by linkable assets. So remember, we want links coming to our site to pump up our balloon, right? So here's Facebook, here's Google My Business, here's Middleton Chamber, here's links coming to the homepage. We've got a service page, we've got a bunch of blog posts, right? Does anybody want a link to my Google Ads service page? I haven't found anybody who wants to yet, right? But I write blog posts and sometimes I can get links to those blog posts. And those links are blowing up the bubble for the whole site and then I link from blog post back to service page, right? So don't just get links to your homepage, get links to your blog posts too. It's all part of it, content and links. That's the long game of SEO. And remember, if you're doing guest posts or anything, you can put in some contextual links back to your site that are gonna tell Google exactly what that page is about. Google also filed a patent that shows they look at these words to the left and to the right of the link too. That's part of how we know how Google works, it's their patents. What should we blog about? Anything we hear often, any questions we're always answering all the time. People are, at, if people are asking questions online, if there's solutions we've found that would benefit other people in the industry, I sometimes uh, that works well. I'm blogging for other agency owners like myself. How-to guides, resources, everybody loves that, right? And then check out answerthepublic.com. This is a fun one. There's a video of a goofy guy. You type in your keyword like pest control, right? And he'll be watching you type and it's really funny. And then it gives you a huge list of questions that people ask all over the web about pest control or whatever your keyword phrase is. So coming up with blog post ideas is not the problem, right? Not the problem. There's plenty of questions. Will it hurt cats? Will it kill spiders, right? <laughs> These are great. Which one's best? Which spray should they use? Will it kill bed bugs? You could have a blog post about every one of these. You're never going to run out of ideas. Don't worry about that part. It's the, the problem is doing the work and doing the blog. All right. I made up this phrase called foundational SEO. Here's what I think it is. All right, I've, try, I've tried to simplify this down over the course of going on five years in business. You research your keywords. How do people search for what you do? You create a keyword to page map. I'm proud of this because I feel like this is like part of my contribution to SEO because I haven't seen anybody else talking about this part. You gotta plan out what is your game plan of keywords to pages. You set up and verify Google Search Console so you can get your historical SEO data. You optimize your pages for your target keywords, ideally using WordPress Yoast or putting your phrases in all the places we talked about. Your URL, your title, your images, your headers, your text, right? You do a quick technical check. I skipped this part of the presentation for time. Basically, your website needs to be great on smartphones and Google needs to agree. It needs to load nice and fast. You don't want to go much over three seconds. It needs to be secure. It should start with HTTPS with a little lock when you look at it in Chrome. And you don't want broken links that take people to a 404 error page. Everything should link to a real page. This is foundational SEO. We, do, we offer this as a service. And then ongoing SEO work, once you've set your foundation, is like this. We blog regularly and we do it well. We earn and respond to Google reviews, ideally slipping in our keywords there where we can, or at least our services, right, or our products. And then we earn links from other websites and this game never ends. We always, always work on this, even when we're number one, because we want to stay king of the hill. That is how SEO works. And then we monitor our rankings. We can do that with Search Console. We can do it manually by doing incognito searches. And then we check out Google Analytics to see how's our organic traffic look and how many leads are we getting through SEO and search engines. Woo! That's a lot, folks. Happy to answer questions. I do want to throw out some options for you if you're ready to do more because there, there's these are big juicy topics and this is stuff that can really really benefit for your business because you're tapping into existing demand so i have a course to mention digitalmarketingmastery.com mydigitalmarketingmastery.com where i go over seo and google ads and google analytics and how to set up a dashboard to measure it all 
right? And then, so yeah, it goes over SEO, Google Ads, Google Analytics, everything. And you can just follow along with me and watch over my shoulders. I do it, this is how I train my team members. This course costs $250. Let me know if you're interested, you can just email me. And then we also obviously do this for clients. This is Tim from Sugar Creek Homes. We did this for him and he sold over $650,000 of custom homes within a year. And then Cheryl, this is on our, this is on the what you get to my Madison website. If you look at the Google ads page, if you want to watch it and hear from him. And then this is Cheryl Loki. She does um, uh, therapy for people with anxiety, depression, PTSD. And within four months of setting up her Google ads, she was full and we had to turn off the Google ads. She had a brand new practice that did not have any clients. And then she was full within four months. So it really does work. Seeing it work, it works great for local businesses. If you would like us to do this for you, we do foundational SEO and Google ads set up for 5,000 bucks. Happy to talk. So I have a whole team as well. We can help with digital marketing strategy, with training, with SEO, Google ads, with Facebook, Instagram, YouTube ads, and with setting up funnels and automated emails. So Egan, E-A-G-A-N at getfoundmadison.com is the absolute best way to reach me. And I would love to answer your questions now. While you guys are thinking of those questions, I just want to say thank you to Egan for doing this. Whoa, that is a lot. And I think um, it's always something that we're learning. And I know I took like a whole page of notes just for, for myself. So thank you for being here and doing that. Um, just, a, just a shout out again to those sponsors, which were Monona Bank, Total Wine, TDS, and H. Kruger and Associates. Um, we do have a couple upcoming events um, for you guys. Next week, we have an economic development um, session, and then we do have a business boost on recruiting towards the end of the month. And if you tune in live to Facebook in about two minutes, uh, Lisa, our membership manager, is going to be live at one of our um, member offices and so those are she does a really great job and they're really fun to watch so i would encourage you guys to do that so we'll stay on here for a couple of minutes we would love to have some questions for egan and thank you guys for taking time to be here uh, thanks Kristen. yeah thanks everybody for joining too happy to answer any questions you got and yeah feel free to email me